This is Christ Jesus Church, San Antonio, giving you the hope of glory. And now, here's Pastor Philip Sundar with this Sunday's message, Victory Voice. No, my favorite place is in the church. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. Yeah. You're probably thinking, no, Pastor, you're lying. <laughs> no, you probably like AMC Theater, but I love this theater. Amen. Because I know one thing for sure, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. The AMC Theater takes my $20, but the Lord gives more. Is that, is that a good deal? Like you go to the movie theater, it's like $16 for a popcorn and then icing. <laughs> it is expensive. And you go to excited, I'm gonna watch movie after movie like this. <laughs> and you think, why did I waste 20 bucks? On? And we're supposed to be in the house of God, Amen. having a good time with the Lord. Because the Lord will never give you a gloomy message. Amen. He said, the gospel of Jesus Christ is what? The power! I love that. We go for power. We want to just get excited. But the word of the Lord is the power of God. That's what Paul says. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the dunamis power. The dunamis, yeah. You just don't come in like uh, you know like this, but you're gonna walk out of here knowing, my Lord, I have a King who glorifies my life, right? Yeah. Like, who glorifies my life? Hallelujah! Good to see my brother, <laughs> all the way from Corpus. So I want to encourage you that don't get discouraged of being in church. Some people who probably came because your family told them, you better be there at the church. <laughs> You're sitting here like uh, looking at this preacher like a one in the world is going to talk tonight, this morning. So just have a smile. Because when you stare at me, I'm going to stare at you. <laughs> We're fixing to have a good time here. We better just uh, connect each other so the Lord can move, move here, right? Is that, is that a good deal? Yes. Because I love preaching the word. You're gonna, you're gonna see how I get excited about this word. Because I know one thing. The word could see my man. You can be seated. See you. Thank you, thank you, brother. So, you know, I know it's a small congregation, but I love serving the people of God. So if you probably fought this morning for a taco, get over it. <laughs> We're gonna eat a nice meal right now. Amen. Somebody probably think I need to get my coffee. Don't worry, we're gonna give you a hot chocolate. <laughs> So just be free. Don't don't be like all spiritual type. No, no. Yeah. we're having a good time. Yeah. Let's have a good time. Yeah. The word of God is what good. Yeah. Bible says like this: taste and see Amen. the Lord is good. Amen. Yes, That's why Bible says go preach the good news. Hallelujah. And by the by Monday to Sunday we go through beating up this world. Oh, Everybody yeah. beating up you, your family, your culture, the world. But Sunday when you come in. You'll be excited because the Lord is going to give you something that's going to change the next week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So if we have a um, chicken cooking in the house, don't worry about it. <laughs> Let chicken cook so much, you can smell from here. <laughs> but let's focus on the word of the Lord. Yes, I'm, I'm, the reason I'm, I'm preparing you guys because what I'm about to give you, it's going to change your destiny. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. I don't want to just to throw this wonderful jewel that I have, but I want to make sure that you are connected with me. Uh -huh. When you're connected with me, I know for sure, whatever you hear, you're not going to see this Indian guy speaking. <laughs> you're going to see somebody else in the house. Yeah. 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 Somebody else is speaking to us. We better catch this good stuff and go home <laughs> and make it use for us. Right? Uh -huh. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I want you to be free. I want you to enjoy yourself. Don't worry about it. This is all our family. You know, we we fellowship and we eat. We love to eat. That's all we do. Christian people love to eat. Because you know why? The Lord said just eat the flesh. We eat it. We eat in the Sunday morning. By the but by faith, we eat the Lord's flesh. That's what we're going to do. Right now. And after we're done, we're going to eat all the earthly flesh too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the subject that I want to talk to this morning is voice your victory. In other words, voice your victory or victory voice. I can, you can look at it both the ways, but I call voice your victory. 
Victor was. I want to take the series of journey just a couple, a couple of minutes with the scriptures because we do know Jesus Christ died for all of our sins, right? Amen. So let's, let's take off the bat from there beginning. If you are thinking there's something that you're still struggling, listen to this word of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, now, that means today, July 8th, around 11.15, right now. Therefore, there is no condemnation to you and me that we are in Christ. So you can erase right off the bat. If you have sinned last night, you're probably sniffing and dipping and duping, wherever. But you know, this morning, you all say, Lord, forgive me. He is good God. He'll able to forgive you. He's, I'm not saying just to forgive and then you can go smoke something else tonight. No, that's what I'm meant to be doing that. I'm telling you that if you're feeling guilty because the word of God is going to about to come forth and to empower you, if you're feeling guilty, you just take the first step. You take the first step, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins that I messed up last night. I don't know what I did, but I'm asking you to forgive me, Lord, and strengthen me that I will not do that sin again. Yes. Period. Yes. Over. Yes. And roll the paper, throw in the trash can right there. Yes. Now we're going to walk yes. into the high dimension of the truth. Yes. Because you're not called to be stuck. Bible says we're called to go upward and forward. We're not by here. When Jesus said, leave Egypt, he did not say just I'm going to come and do something else. He said, leave the Egypt. I will show you what? Promised land. What is promised land? Promised land is filled with the sweet and filled with the righteousness. Milk and honey will flow in that land. We're looking some kind of trees will drop the honey so we can suck the honey. That's not what he meant. He said the life of Jesus Christ will rule and reign in you so power that every impossible will become possible. That's what the honey will come. When he said the righteousness means that there's nobody out there can condemn you. Your family cannot say you're somebody. You can't do this. You can't be that because the milk is flowing through you. The righteousness of God is so strong that you will not be afraid of any evil report because the Bible says you are made in righteousness in Christ Jesus when he died on the cross. I tell you, you're going to eat some barbecue chicken up and down here. And some macaroni cheese. That's what I'm talking about. All right. See, we like to have fun and then be serious. Because we love that. So I want you to just, you know, when I'm coming serious, just take like that. When I'm in fun, just enjoy that. Because the word of the Lord is also that equally important for our lives. Bible says, my people went in captivity, lack of knowledge. That word lack, you know, it's not like you're, you're, like a, you're living in Africa that you're lacking bananas or fruit potatoes, whatever. That's not what the lack means. Lack means inability to take a hold of the truth. Right, okay. That's the lack, what they translated that. Okay. That means the truth is around us. The message is around us. When we are not capable to take a hold of that, we will go in captivity. But that's why Jesus said, go ye into the world, preach them. What we're doing, we are releasing that pressure, the power, that energy by Jesus Christ that you can take a hold with your spirit, with your soul, with your mind, then you and I will never walk in captivity. The word of the Lord said that, you know, um, if you believe in the Lord, you shall never, what? Perish. Amen. We shall have everlasting life, right? We shall never perish. Because that's what the word of the Lord says. So, same today, the word of the Lord will cause you to grow from glory to glory. Amen. The word of the Lord that you're going to hear, we're going to take a hold of that, will make you to empower yourself. The word of the Lord will increase the blessings over you. The word of the Lord will increase the presence of Jesus over you. The word of the Lord will increase the glory of God. Then you begin to know what to do exactly when the impossible shows your door. You don't have to be afraid. That's why, you know, I was, I was open, to, I opened this service this morning. First thing what? Be not afraid. Because we're living in the culture, things are always being bombarded. Man. Like I said last Sunday, I love Dr. O. Every time when I pray with her, Guess what she does? Amen. Amen. 
I asked the question, what is amen to you? Think with me, what is amen to you? Some people say, be it done. But one thing we don't know what is amen means. You know what is amen means? Yeshua. Because in the book of Revelation, he said, my name is Amen. So when the word of the Lord comes to you, when minister to your heart, don't just sit there like a, like, I don't know about this stuff. Speak it. Be bold. God did not give a mouth to eat Karnagisada only. The mouth we have to shout, right? Shout unto the So when the, when the word of the Lord comes to you, when he speaks to you, just don't sit there confused, mind. Just say, Amen, Lord. Amen. That word has to work in my life. How many wants to see every impossible possible? Amen. Because I want to see that. Yeah. That's the Lord's desire. Bible says he, come, he came to give us life, life in more abundance. Yes. You never find a scripture, Bible says like that. He came to give us a failure. Or he came to give us death. No. The Lord came to give us Zoe. Amen. Life. Amen. That life is not what we see outside. That life what is working inside. Yeah. The inside life is what God is doing. That empowers your soul. Empowers your mind. Empowers your spirit. And finally empowers your mortal body. Yes. Amen. Hmm, glory to God. Okay. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 11. Voice your victory. We already done it. <laughs> Voice your victory. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 51 verse 11. Can you guys see the screen back there? Yeah. Excellent. Work with me today. It will change your life. I promise you. I promise you. It will definitely change your life. I'm not here making another church service here, by the way. Amen. That's not my intentions. Believe me, please, people of God. This is the last thing I want to do. When the Lord called me, I said, Lord, Lord, no, no, I want to be a doctor. That's what I want to be. And when I fail to be a doctor, I want to be a mortal. <laughs> when I figure out I'm short to be a mortal, and I thought maybe I should be an entrepreneur or some, be, do a business. But the last thing in my mind God made it first in my life. So I'm not going to waste my 30 minutes time to say something that's going to tickle in your ear. I'm going to give the word of the Lord because it works for me yes, all through my life. Yes, I would not be here if, the, if it's not the word of the Lord. I would not even marry my wife if it is not the word of the Lord. Amen. So I want you to just to give me your 30 minutes of your attention. I will borrow your time, but I'll give it back to you so you can go eat your meal. But if you're giving your time, please do let the word of God empower you. Yes, so when you walk out of here, this week will be the week that you will see something so better, something so greater. Okay? So look with me carefully. If you're not able to understand the theological part, don't worry about it. As you're coming to church, to Bible studies on 7.30, 7 p.m. every Thursday, God will give you the understanding. But keep listening to the word of God, even though you don't have understanding. Let the spirit of God minister to your heart. It says, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with the singing unto Zion. Here is the word that it shook my being. The everlasting joy shall be upon their head. And they shall obtain gladness and joy. Watch this. Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I don't think anybody out there, any leader out there could say the words like that. Nobody. And people said this is an eschatology scripture. When Jesus comes back, it will happen. Okay. I want to ask you a question. When you ask Jesus to come into your life, did he come or not? Yes, sir. Yes. Because we know he lives in this temple. Yes, Bible says you are the temple yes. of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And if you even questioning what is this Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the character, the essence of Jesus Christ has come to dwell in us. Yes, so when prophet says, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return, come with the singing. Come with the singing. That's what I want to focus on today. 
come with the singing. Singing, we, we use musician to sing, which is great. But singing has another level of understanding. If we read the book of Psalms, all the book of Psalms are songs. Yes. They, saw, they sang, the psalmist sang those songs. But Jesus Christ will begin to manifest in our life through singing. When you sing, it doesn't have to be like, you know, you probably think, I don't have good voice to sing. I'm not trying to teach you to how to sing. I'm trying to tell you your spirit knows to yes. sing. Because your spirit has a melody. That melody, what, what I'm teaching, and I'll tell you why I'm teaching that, so that when you connect to that, you're beginning to see how King David saw hand of God moving. I'm going to give a little bit background about this man called David that you probably never heard. This guy grew up in a big family, raising the sheep, didn't know what God's really calling on his life, but he had a sense of, awareness in his spirit that he's something, he's somebody else that he's supposed to be. And he was so naughty when he's growing up. His father told him, just go back there and just take care of your sheep. When Samuel, who is a prophet, came across their house to anoint the man of God, Hallelujah. Samuel was looking at this man who was a seven feet, by, by, looks like an Arnold Schwarzenegger. He thought, you know, I'm going to anoint this guy. This guy looks like he's the one going to be king. And all these sons of Samuel came. None of them, God said, no, you don't anoint them. No, not, not this one, not this one. And, and the Samuel looking at the Lord, Lord, who do I anoint? Who is this? I'm like, these guys look like they're already well equipped. But God tells, there's a guy behind somewhere. Hallelujah. Just talking to a sheep. Have you ever seen anybody talking to a dog? I talk to my dog. He said, dog, what's going on? And if somebody walks in without, he's crazy. No, he was talking to a sheep. He says, sheep, let's have a good time. I'm going to play a song for you. So you're going to dance? He was singing the songs to sheep. In the middle of that time, the Lord saw something on King David. Because when he's singing, the smoke of the fire went to heaven. How did Jesus, God knew David was the anointed one? The way he was singing, the way he's speaking to the Lord, is the way he said the God who has serviced this one and that one. And God said, that's the one I want to take a hold of. But Samuel is looking outside. Like Bruce Will, Arnold Schwarzenegger, whatever the names are. But God anointed David to be the king. But when he became king, it was a long time before the day it was prophesied. So this is where I want to pose the idea. God spoke a word in your life. That has not manifested yet. King David was only 14 to 16 years old when he was prophesied you will become a king. That moment he was only king for a sheep. He he doesn't even know what king means. From that point to next 15, 16 years of his life led him to be the king. And I want to teach you the principle, what made David to be a king? What did David adapt in his life to see the word of God manifesting? We have the word of God spoken in our life. Somebody, probably God gave you that you will become somebody. God already spoke to you. God has gave you some word that God wants to take you. But in this middle of the period, the word of the Lord does not automatically happen. Something you're doing, the word of God making to happen in your life, in my life. Because when the Lord speaks, there's a prophetic utterance and there's a prophetic word. And King David received the word of the Lord. And King David was anointed that time. That anointing led him step after step to be a king. And in that step, that what I want to express to you so that you can know that you can voice your victory all the way. It was not easy for King David to be king. Did you know Saul was trying to kill him? 
You know, you want to do something, your father and mother would say something else. And God called you to do something, the, the culture is saying something else. Right. And you have always persecution, opposition everywhere. But I want to give you the tool that you can use the tool so that you can see the word of God manifesting. Right. I want to say this and with all due respect. People receive the word of the Lord like a, um, example. I'll take myself example. I don't want to use people's example. I was attending church. I had no intentions what I'm doing today at that time. Amen. There's a man of God came and told me, that one day you're going to be a pastor. This was a long time ago. And I looked at him, you got to be kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's the last thing I want to do, my friend. I can be back there, do media. I'll do great job media. I know IT stuff I can take care of that I can do preaching. So I forgot about that word of God. One year later, God sent somebody else. He spoke the same word. I see you have the word of the Lord you're going to burn into. So it became dawn on me so strong, and God began to speak to me. It's up to you, Philip. Do you want to take my word, run with it? Or you want to back there do what you like to do? And God said to my heart, if you want to see my hand moving strong on you, take the word of God, run with it. And I begin to study and I begin to take the word. I didn't even have an intention where I'm going to open the church. I didn't even have a plan how I'm going to open the church. None of all this. I was focused on what God is speaking to me. And I was working with the Lord as day and day out. And in that process, the Lord ministered to me something. That every word that you hear from the Spirit of God, you can see manifesting in your life. Every word. And this is not magic. This is called obedience to the word of God and making that happen. That's what I want to show. So this King David wrote a, a book. It's in the book of Psalms. I want to see what King David wrote. Then we can take the step after step so that you can use that step to make sure the word of the Lord on your life to bring it to pass. How many strongly believe you're born for more than what you're doing today? I have four people. Let me ask that question again. How many strongly believe you're born to do more than what you're doing today? Amen. Now I gotta, I, I guess I gotta speak twice though. Is that what it is? My English poquito? Comprendo? Because God wants to show you something that will fulfill in your life what God has for you. And if you go with me, book of Psalms, 2 Samuel. I'm sorry, 2 Samuel. Go to 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verse, 20, um, verse 2. 2 Samuel, chapter 22. <clears throat> Are you there? Verse 2. Here you go. I'm coming. Here you go. This is all we need to know. And you're done. We go home and eat some carne sada, macaroni cheese, or whatever we're going to eat. You ready? And this book was written by Samuel, by the inspiration by the Holy Spirit. And King David used this scripture in his Psalms. You can find all through Psalms. But I'm going to take it to the root where the word of the Lord. The David spoke this, by the way. And Samuel wrote this, right? If you look at verse 1, And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song. You see the song right there? Okay. Did he say that David sang this song or spoke? spoke. All right. The song does not have to be sing. Some songs need to be spoken. When Bible says, I will give you a new song, he's not talking about, No, that's not what he meant by that. He's going to give you a word to speak it. Yeah. So King David spake unto the Lord the words of this song. He took the song, he spoke it, right? And he says, in the day the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. So King David knew what delivered him from the enemies, from the hand of Saul. 
Saul represents the family members some somebody we go through pressures. The enemies represent everything that's standing against the will of God that God has for you. The world system, the man's traditions, or the people ideologies, whatever it might be. They're all working against you to stop you what you call to do. But there's only one weapon that make and break through those things and make it happen. It's the song of the Lord. That's what I'm going to teach you here. Yes. You're going to learn this song and you're going to go home and do this song. I guarantee double dog Dino dare you. You have to see the manifestation. Whatever you're believing for it. By the way, I'm not this bold when I'm outside the pulpit. So don't ever think that. <laughs> When you see me out to the pulpit, I'm sometimes listening to my message. I'll be surprised. What in the world I'm speaking of? <laughs> the Lord only can do this work. <laughs> and he said like this. He said, the Lord is my rock. Ah. Hallelujah is right. And he says, and my fortress. And my deliverer. And my God is of my rock. In him will I trust he is my shield, my horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuse, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. Hallelujah. I don't know I have time to explain all of them, but I'll try three. Hallelujah. So verse two can empower you from today. Hallelujah. Okay. We want to we wanna make sure we understand this. Jesus Christ is not just the Lord. He's not just a savior only. He's not, you know, in the book of Isaiah says, he's a mighty God. He's a counselor. He is our wisdom. He is our understanding. He is the power of God. He is the Holy Spirit. And King David opened up the realm of the Spirit on a mankind to see something that a lot of us, we don't see that. Jesus Christ is my rock. Okay. You're probably thinking, when you, have you ever seen the rock outside? Yeah. That's what Paul, the David says, he is my rock. So let's say it this way. The violence is standing before you. You're saying, he is my rock. And I'm going to say, he is my rock. And those violence still looking at you, laughing at you. <laughs> Go for it. And he is my rock. Go for it. Yes, he is my rock. Go for it. What you're doing is you're saying without the understanding what the rock really is. When you speak it with an understanding, that rock becomes a power for any violence that stands against that rock. Let me show the understanding of the rock. In the Exodus book of Exodus, God told Moses, Moses, people were asking for water. Go speak to the rock. The rock will bring the water. Okay. Now the first essence comes from the rock. When you say he is my rock, you're expecting the waters to boil up. You're expecting something to come alive because you're not just speaking it. You're expecting when I say the rock, the water has to come forth because God said it. In book of Deuteronomy, Bible says like this. Go with me, just read this, Deuteronomy 32, 13. Deuteronomy 32, 13. Watch this. Remember, voicing your victory. Chapter 2 going on right now. If you just tuned into our broadcast. <laughs> Deuteronomy. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 13. Look at this, be carefully. Oh, I feel it. Have you ever seen the song, How Low You Can Go? <laughs> how low you can go? Yeah. Now I'm going to teach you how high you can go. Right. How high you want to go. Let's see this. 13 says, He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the field. And he made him to what? Suck honey of what? 
the rock. You're still not getting it, but you're going to get it. Okay, we got two options. When you say, Jesus is my rock, your mind is thinking, number one, the water of the living water has to come out of my being. Number two, when you're saying, he's my rock, I'm not going to be afraid. Of, now you're looking at the waters will be elevated you into the top mountain. Now you begin to suck the honey out of the rock. What does that mean? When you take the honey that in the middle of the crisis that you will not fear, no matter what happens, even though you walk through the valley, a shadow of death, you will not fear because the honey will take a hold of you. You become so bold, every impossible will become possible. You know it, and the Lord knows. Now you're calling upon, He is my rock. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. So now you know when you're calling Him a rock, God gave it to you understanding. Put it in action. Your body is hurting. I dare you to do this. I did all the time. I put my hand on it. I said, you are not going to abuse me. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I am calling the rock who is about to bring the waters out. And Jesus is my rock. You must be healed. People are going, it's time to be real Christians. Is that all right? Anybody need a lemonade right now? Because you're looking like I just had some lemon. Jesus is your rock. Pastor Corinthians, look this with me. Pastor Corinthians 10 for this will conclude why I say Jesus is the rock. Pastor Corinthians 10 for. Oh, good Lord. Amen. My Lord Jesus. I don't know about you, I get very excited about the scriptures. Look at 1 Corinthians 10 for. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, it says, and did all drink. The same spiritual drink, for they drank out of the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was what? Christ. That's what King David understood. When he looked upon, do you know King David had to face most dangerous enemies that you and I are facing? They're so dangerous, I don't want to go details, it threatened the nation. But King David has to learn a lesson. How can I stand strong in the middle of the forces attacking me? And he needs to train himself to believe. The rock I trust will never let me go down. And I'm not calling him just a rock without my understanding. When I call him rock, I know he's about to gush the waters out of this temple. When I call him a rock, I know he will give me the privilege to suck the honey that every enemy will bend their knees. I know when I call him a rock, I'm calling a Christ who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask or think. Yes, That's who you're calling. So we read my rock and we are missing this portion. In spiritual realm, there's something is happening our naked eyes cannot see. But as you put in your understanding behind that word, they can sense it. This is what they can sense it. Have you ever seen, uh, um, what do we put? This may be good. They, this may be a good idea. And it may be not biblical. Just have fun. Kids will love it. Before Michael Jackson comes into the stage, you know what they do? A lot of times, they release a smoke. Have you ever seen the live shows of Michael Jackson? It's like, two. Uh, 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 he'd be like there. And before that, a smoke comes in. Right? As soon as the smoke comes in, the people that are working with him know he's coming. It's the same way in the spiritual realm. As you begin to call upon the Lord, there will be a smoke that comes out of you. That is the anointing of the Lord. And they will know he's about to come and destroy the powers of darkness. Yes, 
It is an invisible halo smoke. Because you're calling on him. He cannot miss your voice. Whosoever calls upon him, he will answer you. But sometimes we don't see what the Lord is doing. When you call him my rock, you're waiting on him. He has to show up. I know he is my Lord. He's not going to leave me alone in this thing. He will show up. And he will show up for every impossible to make possible. And be bold and strong. Don't let the voice of enemy to paralyze you. You speak. Who are you? You Philistine. You have no covenant with the king that I have it. When I call him, he has to show in my family. <sighs> my time is up here. I like that. I was going to go to my fortress. Somebody says, yes, let's go eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going I'm to bring it out so that we can go home. But I will continue for this definitely. The next one is my fortress. When, when David said my fortress, have you ever seen the fortress? The fortress are built with the strong walls. When kingdom is established, they build a fortress around it to protect the temple, to protect the civilization, to protect the king's house. So when Paul, when, when, when uh, King David calls him, he's my fortress. He's saying like this, that Job says, he puts a hedge of protection is around me. What you're doing is, as you call in him, he's my fortress. The eyes of a spirit will open. You'll begin to see the fire that's around you that will be protecting you from the enemies that's going to come into the camp because it will not touch you. That's what Bible says like this, that the, the smoke of the Lord melts every enemy that's going to come and approach. What happens? There is a fortress around you. It filled with a fire that when you're calling upon the name, when the enemies approaches that fire, they have to melt like the creeping things. They have to go all crazy. I can't touch this world. I can't touch this people because the power on your life is greater because you're calling my fortress. I always question, how did David encourage himself? This is how he encouraged him. Hallelujah. When he was in the middle of crisis like we are in, he was not looking for pastor to help. He was not looking for rabbi to call. Let me text to Rabbi Jehovah. He looked upon the scriptures. He said, Lord, where else I go? You are my rock. When he said, you are my rock, he's thinking about you have to send that water. When he said, you are my rock, I can't face these giants that I'm facing right now. Lord, you are my fortress. That means the Lord is bringing the angels to put the fire around you that every violence that are approaching cannot touch your life. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I'm done. Let's use this too, faithfully. Yes, if you're faithful in little, Hallelujah. he will honor you faithful in bigger. Yes. Let me ask you a question. How many of us have some things that you're facing right now? I have three. Let me ask again. I got asked twice. How many of us are here facing something that you're asking God to move in your life? Yes. Be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Use this word, two words. And you mean it when you're in your closet, in your car. No matter where you are, don't worry about who's watching you. This is not something that we want to be smart before people. You know what Bible says? The knowledge of this world is a foolishness to God. That tells us barns of noble selling all the foolishness. <laughs> With all due respect. I books are selling all foolishness. That's the word of the Lord. So you want to believe that and act like all reserved? Yeah. 
Or you want to take the word of God and see the power of God moving in your life and you will become the light on this earth. You will become the salt. And when you look upon somebody going through, you say like this, hey, stop that crying. I know who can answer their prayer that when you call upon the Lord, he has to bring down every impossible possible. I'm encouraging you that use two words, my rock, my fortress. When you call upon you, the Lord on behalf of your family, don't worry what they're drinking, smoking. The fortress that's on you has to be on them. Amen. They can only go so far. But when they see that fire running after them, they will bend their knees one day. Hallelujah. They say, Lord Jesus, I don't know what my mother was praying for me. I don't know what my father is crying upon me. But I want to give my life to you, Lord. Amen. Can you turn to your neighbor and now speak it with understanding? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. is my rock. my rock. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. is my fortress. With this knowledge, think just with me. What is that you cannot do? Who is out there can tell you you cannot do? With this knowledge. That's what I say. The knowledge of Jesus Christ will make you in walk in multiplication of grace. Will make you in walk more abundantly. We have tremendous knowledge out there. But this knowledge is so higher than anything that you taste out there. And he's freely giving to us, not condemning anybody. When that woman was dragged before him, they said she's a prostitute, she must be killed. And the Lord said, if any one of you do not have the sin, let him first throw the stone. Mm -hmm. And everybody walked away from that woman. He looks at this prostrate woman. He said, neither do I condemn you. Right. Only the master has a power to condemn anybody. Yet he chose to say one word, I don't condemn you. So don't you worry about what people tell you who you really are. Yes. The master is telling something greater than what people are telling. Yes, sir. Amen. I have forgiven your sins, said the Spirit of God. Yes. Don't hold them against yourself. Let them go. Ask the Lord, reveal to me, Lord, what this means to be forgiven. Hallelujah. And the Spirit of God will lead you into liberty. That's why whom sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. 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 Now you're going to enjoy your barbecue chicken along with this chicken. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And don't forget to come Thursday Bible studies. How many coming Thursday Bible study? It is life changing. If you think this is something, Bible says are great. Amen. Please do recommend people to come and get the word of God. Let the word of God change your destiny. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, one more time. Give the Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to just to close the service without we are praying for everybody here. So if you would just touch your neighbor, just quietly, touch your neighbor. As musicians are going to play. Touch your neighbor. I want to just to speak to you. That if you are here that you never made Jesus as your Lord. And you heard this word and you got it fired up. Man, what is this guy talking about? But my friend, I'm introducing to the man that changed my destiny. I'm introducing the king that rules over my life. Who fulfills everything that my heart desires. And he's asking you today. Where are you? As the woman of God spoke this word this morning. Where are you with me? Who are you in me? As he is visiting your life right now, 
Don't push him away. You are the child of Most High God. All you have to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Change me, my master. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving my sins. And if you pray the prayer, my friend, we believe with all our hearts you are in the family of God. And he will teach you with this word to be a true servant of God. He will teach you with this word to be a disciple of our master, Lord Jesus Christ. So if you never accepted him into your life, repeat after me. Pray with me. Put your heart in this prayer. Don't just say it. Put your heart. You say, Lord Jesus. Come on, speak with me, all of us. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Thank you for dying for my sins. Come into my Lord. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Lead me into truth and righteousness. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, let's give them a big hand clap. I say this to you. That's all the people of God. It's not a big thing. We believe on Him. We preach Him here. We declare His name here. We believe on Him. Hallelujah. And I want to just pray one more prayer that if you would touch them, speak a blessing over them. The blessings of my rock will rest upon you. Come on, speak it. The blessings of my rock will rest upon you. The blessings of my fortress will rest upon you. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Did you receive that? Come on, let's give the Lord hand up. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining us. This is Christ Jesus Church, giving you the hope of glory with Pastor Philip Sundar. Christ Jesus Church is located at 4412 West Avenue, Suite 100, San Antonio, Texas, 78213. You can contact us at 210-724-3353 or visit us at cjesusc.com.